In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new system available in Generate Blocks version 2.3 that will allow you to create mega menus. This system is a little bit confusing at first in terms of how to work it all together, but once you get it, once it should be relatively straightforward. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at an example demo, which is healthline.com, and we're going to recreate a couple of the panels off of their mega menu so that you can get a feel for how it works and then go ahead and try to do it yourself. So here is the example mega menu that a member of my community asked for help rebuilding. And I find personally, I'm not sure if it's something in my environment, but I find that it is pretty tricky to open their menu for whatever reason. As you saw, I hovered and it didn't pop open at first, but luckily I haven't found that to be an issue with the generate block side of things. So what I've done on the site so far is just go ahead and get one of these panels set up so you can see kind of how it works, what my approach would be, and just understand how these couple of pieces fit together to create this mega menu panel here, and then we'll go ahead and build out another one together. So switching over to my demo site here, of course, you can see that this site is not representative of the design. That's really not what we're concerned with here. It's just simply getting this mega menu functional. And what I've done is go ahead and set up the panel underneath the tools option. So the headlines, styling, colors, the fonts, things like that are not similar, but you can get the idea that here is our mega menus panel. So we have the different headings and the different links as we do just inside of this example as well. And the way that this works in Generate Blocks is kind of a little clunky in my opinion. You have to add the navigation as a site header element and Generate Press. Then you go back to a separate area and generate blocks and create an overlay panel. And then that attaches to the mega menu item. So it's, you know, follow some conventions of other things like Max Mega Menu and other plugins like that that do it kind of similarly, but it's not something that feels super intuitive at first. So that's why I wanted you to see how all of this comes together. So first of all, let's take a look at our plugins on the site. We just have generate blocks pro 2.3 and GP premium 2.5.5. So make sure you have those installed. And then from here, let's take a look at our menus. So I just have a standard WordPress menu, and this has each of the pages on the navigation, as you already saw, wellness, tools, and so on. And the way that you attach these mega menu panels to the individual links is just open this up, and then you'll see there's this mega menu options. So there's gonna be all the different panels, and right now I've only created one. It's this tools MM, tools mega menu. You can call it whatever you want. So that's how I've been able to attach that specific panel to this specific menu link. That's nice and easy. Now, another piece of this puzzle is that this works with the new generate press element that is the site header. So you can see that I have this element here, which is the block type. I'd have to go to choose element type of block, create that. And then when you pop into that section, you just, of course, can set all the various properties like display rules and excludes and stuff that you're used to in Generate Press, as well as the element type needs to be set to site header. Then in this newest version of Generate Blocks, there's this navigation block. And inside of this, you have all kinds of options for styling and control layouts and that kind of thing. So with our navigation, if I wanted to, just like the uh, version on Healthline, I could set this background color to just, you know, something like mostly black. And then of course we need to change our menu uh, item text colors to be white. Then we could change the hover color here to something like blue. That's a little bit too dark, maybe something just a little bit lighter like that. So that's perfect. You can see that you have all the controls that you would expect in terms of styling, but you might be wondering, well, how do I attach the mega menu here? Well, this is what I mentioned before, where you have to go to that separate area and generate blocks to create an overlay panel. So we would just go ahead and set up our menu here, however you want in terms of the menu item styling and colors and that sort of thing. We'll save this. And then we need to come back to generate blocks and go to overlay panels. So this system has a couple of different overlay types. These can be like pop-ups. So they can be like exit intent pop-ups, for example, or like click on a button and it makes a pop-up appear, or the panel can be a mega menu, which is exactly what we want. Before we create a new one, let's just go ahead and click into this tools mega menu that I've created. And this is gonna look familiar to anybody that's ever gone through my Generate Made Easy course or as part of my community, because this is just essentially just standard generate blocks build that just so happens to be in a mega menu. So let's take a look at each one of these components. So I have this wrapper container and I set a class on this so I can control this across all the different overlays that I'm going to need since I have to be in multiple different areas. I wanna be able to control all of these things as much as I can through a global style. So if I need to change layout, colors, formatting, that kind of thing, I do it on one global style and it will attach to all of those instances of that particular global style. So in my case here, I just call this MM wrapper. It's just mega menu wrapper. 
This is set as a grid four, and then I have a gap of one, which is how you can see that these columns are laid out in a four column grid. There's a little bit of collapsing font here that you can see, but that's not represented on the front end as you already saw. Digging down into one of these containers, we just have an H2 heading here for the featured uh, headline, lessons, newsletters, and so on. Then we have a list container, and this is actually a container with the tag name switched from div down to UL for unordered list. That's a proper convention to be following in terms of accessibility. And then each of the individual links inside of here, which currently are just text, they're not actually linked, their tags are set to li, so they become list items inside that unordered list, which is perfect for things like keyboard navigation and screen readers. Now you can see by default here in Generate Press, it adds a bunch of extra margin to the ULs and OLs here. So what we would need to do is just something like add our own little parameter here. We could create a custom class. And on this MM wrapper, I'm just gonna look for any UL, create that. And we're gonna go to spacing, margin left zero and margin bottom zero. So we have to save this. And then let's just go take a look quickly on the front end. And then if we just hover over tools, we can see our mega menu and that change is reflected here. So we see that change here on the front end, but not the back end because that's a theme style that loads super early. So the fact that we've set that CSS, it applies kind of later in the loading process. So it looks correct on the front end, but not in the back end. Then coming back to our setup here on this list wrapper, I also went ahead and just set a class here of MMLI so I can do you know really anything I need. And then also on the column itself, I've set a global style of like mega menu column. Now, a big advantage here is that like, for example, on this H2, I don't have any global styles attached to this, but because we can do compound and nested selectors and generate blocks, what I could do if I wanted to target all of these headlines is go to this MM call global style or class, then create my own selector here and just type in H2. So this is effectively going to mean that any container with the class of MM call that has a child that's an H2 now will inherit this styling. So I could change this font size to something like two rim if I wanted to, shrink it up a little bit. I could change the text color to be black and then it applies to all of those headings as well as if they were in completely different panels, it would also apply to that as well. So we can go ahead and save this. Once again, take a look on the front end and there's our changes. These look wrong because these aren't actually linked, so they're just picking up the standard text colors rather than the uh, actual link colors. But of course, you get the idea. That is how all of this comes together. So what we would want to do from here is go back to our overlay panels. We go to this add new with the arrow and select mega menu. And you can see that we're effectively starting from scratch with each of these panels. So the tools one is its own panel, featured is its own panel, connect and so on. I'm not a huge fan of each one of these being in separate places, but it does give you the ability to control and style any of them completely independent from one or the other. So it's kind of trade-offs both ways, but I think that trade-off does make sense even though it might be a little bit more work. However, if you do what I've done and just attach those global styles, there's really not a big deal in terms of making sweeping styling changes to the mega menu, which hopefully you'll kind of have set in stone before you even begin. So let's go ahead and try to make another one of these panels. And I think we'll do this connect one because this one's pretty interesting. So what I'll do is call this one connect and MM. And then I'm just gonna start off with a container. This global style will be that MM wrapper. For whatever reason, the overlay panel by itself doesn't get set to the full width attribute at first. So I need to come into this overlay panel, scroll all the way down to the bottom and width mode and select full width because I'd rather control that with my own containers and global styles rather than letting the uh, generate block system handle that for me. Then from here, let me open up this sidebar so you can see what I want to do next. I'm gonna pop in another container that will act as the top row of this connect panel. Then there'll be a second one that will be a grid three that just wraps, and then there'll be this kind of footer section down here. So what I'll do inside this container is just pop in like an H2, and then this one will just say, find your community, something like that. Drop in the text below that. Then what I wanna do is come back to this container. I'm gonna quickly rename this to top row. Then I'll do an add after here and drop in another container on this paragraph. This one I'm going to just type in as grid three. And I wanna give this a global style here also of grid three. And we'll drop in a gap of one on that as well. So then let me go ahead and add in another container that's going to effectively be the grid child. And this is an icon with the text of breast cancer. I wonder if I can go ahead and grab this icon real quick. 
Okay, so I had to dig way down in here, but these are essentially just images on the left with some text on the right. So this is a very simple layout. It also follows that same kind of convention of the unordered list, and each of these links are LIs just as they should be. So what we would wanna do from here is just go ahead and make sure that we have this grid three set to the unordered list, and then each of these containers need to be the LI as well. We also need to come back to this grid three and for this list style under the styles tab, we gotta go to lists and set the list style type to none in this case. Again, we're gonna have that extra margin unfortunately here in the back end, but we shouldn't have any problems on the front end. So from here, what we could do is just drop in a flex row and then we could go with another gap of one, which I think should be fine. We'll drop in the generate blocks image and here's that image, which I know because I saw it was only 70 pixels wide. So we'll go with 70 and 70. Then we should just be able to drop in probably an H3 after that. Might not even be H3, it might just be a regular paragraph. Interestingly on their site, the text is just wrapped in a span. So I think instead of an H3, I'm just gonna go with a regular old paragraph. And then that just says breast cancer. Then from here to get this to center, let's just go ahead and create a class called align center, blank style. And then for our layout and our Alignment property will just go align items and center. Now this text by default has some bottom margin on it, which is another generate press CSS tweak. So if you haven't removed that in your style sheet, you will either need to zero that out here. So spacing bottom margin on that paragraph as zero, or the better thing to do is to use a little bit of CSS that uh, will apply to any of these items that are the last in their container and automatically remove that for you. Now, if you get to this point, you may be trying to figure out how do I make this a link? Well, unfortunately, because we've set this as an LI, which of course we definitely wanna do, we actually have to add an A tag inside of this with another container. So on this image, I'm gonna go with a container and then drop that in there as well. And that's going to mean moving some of those classes that we just made onto this container here. So we need to basically move all of these. So align center, flex row, and our gap one. So we can go flex row, align center, and our gap of one which for whatever reason is not appearing in the list that happens from time to time, which is insanely annoying. I'm gonna just save and refresh this and see if maybe it will just work as it's supposed to. Yeah, there it is. I don't know why that sometimes happens. In any case, now we can take this, I'm gonna rename this just link wrapper to be clear. And we need to change this tag name to an A, which is just ever so slightly cut off on your screen here. And now we can actually make this particular link wrapper and a link. Now it looks like it has changed some of our alignment properties here. So we would probably need to go here to layout and set this back to just default. So our class kicks in, but we still have the a property here. And of course, with this link destination, we can send this to wherever we want, somewhere like, you know, google.com for example. Okay, so then just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna duplicate this a couple of times like that. And then now we need to go back with our grid three and our gap of one here. And because we've changed the structure of this setup, we do need to go ahead and remove the grid three off of this outermost wrapper here that we had set up before. And now everything is starting to come together. So then from here, what we could do is just simply duplicate this top row, bump it down a stretch, and we could just rename this to bottom row. And then on this container, we could just go with a flex call, and then we could do something like a gap of two to kind of spread each one of these containers out. You can play with that however you want. Then from here in our connect tab, we have a follow us on social media and then a bunch of social links underneath that. So I would just simply do that with the generate blocks text element. I would set it to something like a span, and then we would drop in an icon so under the social tab, we could just drop in, you know, like Facebook, for example, and then we just need to show the icon by itself. So I would just drop these into another container, set this to, you know, maybe like a grid four or six or whatever makes sense. And then we could just duplicate this, you know, a bunch of times, something like that. And then we might, because of the, you know, the fact that there's a bunch of extra space with these social icons here, you might be better off to go ahead and just set like a max width, which we do have a couple of those. So max width like 600, and it will kind of compress the social icons together to make them fit more nicely. But overall, this is the setup here. So this is just building any kind of layout that you want just right here in the mega menu with the understanding that for things like links, you need to make sure that you have them properly tagged with ULs, LIs, A links, and so on. I'll just quickly change this to follow us on social media. And then let's turn this down to an H3 to kind of de-emphasize it a little bit. 
And then on this, I might take this Mega Menu wrapper and add some extra padding. It's only set to one rim on all sides. I think more like two is probably the better thing to do. And so we can go ahead and just save, make sure all of our work is saved. Let's go back out of this global style to the overlay panel. And what we need to do now is look down here for this position to parent in this placement option. So if you just leave this by default, it's going to position the menu in weird ways. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to our menu area, appearance, menus, and then we were just building the connect option. So what we want to do is expand this menu. And then we'll choose the connect option here because of course that's what we called this particular overlay panel. So we'll save this and refresh on the front end. And there you can see it is working exactly as we intended. However, this is what I was talking about where it positions it really strangely. So if we look, it's looking at the position to parent. So it wants you to give it a selector on where to position this particular menu item. In our case, because the menus are super wide, we don't want it to attach to this specific link because obviously it puts it on this edge and then it overflows off the screen, which is no bueno. So what I found the best one to do is just simply this GB navigation. So make sure you add the period in front of the class, drop that in. And then what I do is just bottom left still, save this, refresh, and there we go. Now it fits more in line with the full width of the site and it's positioned inside of our browser window with no overflow, which is exactly what we want. So at this point, we have two totally different mega menu panels that can have completely independent and unique content. And of course we can style them really similarly. So everything is starting to come together. Obviously this doesn't look great. This doesn't match the exact design, but really once you figure out the nuts and bolts of how to put all this together, then the design really is no problem at all. So let's quickly recap. You need to come in here to your menu. Make sure you just have a basic menu set up. You need to make sure you have an element for the site header with the navigation block, the new one dropped in there. Then you need to come into the overlay panels, make sure you have it built out. And of course you have to set the display rules. Then in here, of course, you just need to go through these configuration options. The most important one is this position to parent and then also the width mode down here in the lower right corner. So overall, this is a fairly straightforward system. It's definitely gonna be a muscle memory thing. Once you start doing it more often, it will you know, just become easier and easier as everything does. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the person who asked about this is inside of my premium community. And in there, you can ask for help. You can get advice, go through any of my courses, and it's all just 20 bucks a month. If you're interested, definitely check out the link in the description below. And if you have questions, drop them in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.